With two snowmobile deaths in as many days and the arrival of spring, the OPP is urging snowmobilers to avoid taking unnecessary risks, especially on frozen waterways as their season winds down. The two tragedies last weekend mark 11 fatal snowmobile incidents and 13 lives lost in OPP jurisdictions so far this season. The OPP cannot stress enough the importance of avoiding frozen waterways at this time of year. Five people who died this season were traveling on lakes or rivers when their snowmobile either broke through the ice or was driven into open water. One such case occurred last weekend. Excessive speed, driving too fast for the conditions and alcohol and or drug impairment continued to be other leading factors in OPP investigated snowmobile deaths. The OPP reminds snowmobilers that with warmer temperatures in many parts of the province, riding conditions on water ways and land will deteriorate daily. Area highways will benefit from a $1.3 billion spend announced by the Ontario government. Minister of Transportation Jeff Urich announced funding for projects that will help create jobs for Ontario's construction industry and keep our highways safe and reliable so that Ontario has a transportation network that encourages job creation, investment and trade in every region across the province. The announcement confirms that the government is planning to proceed with 123 rehabilitation projects across the province. For the Northeast region, that includes Sault Ste. Marie. They are mainly resurfacing projects, but does not include new builds. Area projects include Highway 631 Easterly in White River and Bar River Road to Sault Ste. Marie Southeast Limits. The owner of the transport truck involved in the deadly Humboldt Broncos bus crash has admitted he did not follow provincial and federal safety rules. A lawyer for Sukhmander Singh of Adesh Dale Trucking pleaded guilty on his behalf in a Calgary court yesterday to five charges. The reason why it's not connected is because these were administrative, uh, regulatory type of charges. Um, it, this wasn't a criminal act, it wasn't a criminal wrongdoing. He was the owner of the company and unfortunately um, he had employed this, a particular driver that was involved in this accident. So although they seem like they're tied, but they're not really directly tied, um, the, um, the, he was investigated, the company was investigated following this accident. So um, a lot of the times there's a lot of, uh, even in like corporations, there is a admin uh, things that are missed so that's what they found was like logs or like things of that nature that they found. The head of the Federal Aviation Administration was grilled by lawmakers yesterday after the two deadly crashes of Boeing's new 737 MAX planes raised questions of whether the FAA has gone too far in letting companies regulate themselves. The fact is that the FAA decided to do safety on the cheap which is neither cheap nor safe and put the fox in charge of the hen house. That was true of the 737 MAX 8. In its rush to produce that aircraft because of competition from Airbus, critical safety features were disregarded. Safety is not just a set of programs that can be established or implemented it is a way of living and working, and it requires the open and transparent exchange of information. It takes collaboration, communication, and common safety objectives to allow the FAA and the aviation community to jointly identify system hazards and to implement safety solutions. 